Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, this section of the Doors Open Day event. And for this film, uh, I'm with uh, Richard Aitken and Carrie Farnell, who are two of the conservators for High Life Highland. So I'll let them introduce themselves before I go any further in chatting. Hello, I'm Richard Aitken. I'm Senior Conservator for Highland Archives. Um, we look after the whole of the uh, um, Highland area. So that goes to Wick, Sky, Paul William and Inverness. Okay. Hello, my name is uh, Karen Farnell and I'm a conservator here at the Archives. And, um, my main job is to um, work on project and external work. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've hit on an interesting point. So in simple terms, for anyone who doesn't know, what is a conservator? So what do your jobs consist of? So conservator, um, in the archive service is working on organic material. So we work on paper, parchment, books, maps, um, anything that's really sort of uh, manuscript. Um, but that does go into the digital age as well, which does involve CDs, photographs, and um, video reels as well. But most of the work we work on generally are books, paper objects, maps. Okay, so people, I think, we were chatting beforehand, I think sometimes people associate the word conservator with the art world and repairing paintings, but um, there are different types and obviously because you're based in the archive service, you're, you're looking at repairing and conserving our document collections, primarily. Mm -hmm. um, so do you want to chat us through some of the tools that you use in the trade or uh, some of the things you've got out to show people? I know you have loads of specialist equipment within this studio. What have we got to show? Well, um, this isn't specialist equipment, but when, uh, maybe, whenever a document comes in, uh, we'll go through all the uh, document type documenting processes, which begins with putting things onto a database. So all our treatments are recorded. We take photographs through the processes. So as soon as a a document comes into conservation, it's then photographed, so we've got a before um, documentation. And then as we go through the treatments, um, we do all the treatment processes, um, and then we obviously take photographs at the end. Um, when we're running through a document, um, we take photographs, then we'll start cleaning using a latex sponge, it's like an aerated sponge that's very good for loose soot and dirt. Um, and then we'll use a soft brush just to um, remove any excess um, cleaning residues. <clears throat> soft brush is so that we don't add any extra abrasion to, to the papers and the documents that we're using. And the, the aim of this process is to stabilise the documents so that they can be used in the future. So they're, you're just ensuring that no uh, any damage is, is kind of neutralised and anything that's not going to be damaged for going forward. That's the, the main yes. objective. Yeah, so, so when we um, begin working on a document, we do all our analysis. So we'll start off with taking uh, measurements of the document. And so, so that you have a, record when it comes in for a treatment and um, then after treatment we'll take a measurement again and because of wet treatments things that we use and um, map quite often stretches a little bit because we'll dry it under tension that's uh, a lining on the map wall there that you can see that's been driving the tension waiting for this map here to so be transferred onto it which carries things to later on today. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So what sort of skills do you think you need? Just when you're talking there about um, cleaning and, and uh, measuring and looking after. So it's obviously a very precise job to, with attention to detail needed. Yeah, so I was, the other part of analysis is checking the inks and making sure that, well, you're, trying to, you're working out what the inks are doing. So are they going to be soluble in water? Are they going to be soluble in a solvent such as um, 
alcohol or acetone. Um, what are the inks made of? Are they carbon black ink? Are they iron gold inks? Um, those two inks are generally more um, more um, traditional inks until you get into the mid or late 20th century, 21st century, where there's a lot more inks around. Um, uh, so we're testing the inks. If they do need fixing, then we've got fixatives that we'll use. Um, Paraloid B72 is one that we like using. And um, that's mixed using an acetone. And then um, we can go over later on with the acetone to remove the residues of B72. There are other ones as well, but uh, that's our favourite one. That's my, that's my favourite cleaving material. <laughs> uh, fixing material. Fixing material. Fixing material yeah. It's interesting, even just listening to you talk already, for anyone who's been watching the series of films will know we're, we're generally concerned with stories, with documents, with the content. Um, but your job is very much about protecting the object of yeah. the document mm -hmm. as opposed to the content. Mm -hmm. But protecting the object ensures that the content survives, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. So what sort of problems do you usually see when documents come in? Are there particular things that We often in? get um, mould, mouldy documents, and um, we'll get documents that have been poorly handled, so you get losses and um, areas that are text that are missing, but could cause maybe more of a risk to document later on, like if someone handles it in the search room. So uh, we also get like um, of, like fines coming off books, which can be Example. interesting. I've got <laughs> examples here. Um, I've actually got a new spine on this one, and uh, yeah, these are from Argyle Estates. So um, very old books. This one's 1775. But, yeah. See, but, That's yeah. something that people, even in their own house, will be familiar with, with the spines coming off books if you handle them too yeah. roughly. Yeah, you can see the corners if you show the corners. Yeah, yeah. The corners are still waiting to be consolidated. Yeah, you can see where that's actually um, parchment uh, vellum corners. Uh, so. And that's just from from storage and from being uh, used and handled and just, just wear general, and tear. Just general yeah, handling, yes. wear and tear. Uh, this one's 1775. It's uh, this one's actually a census record. Uh, this one's 1779. So this one would have been a. So, so that's 1775 to 1803. So that was a working document for 28 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh so, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then has survived yeah. ever since then. Yeah. Being looked at and, yeah. and used. So I guess quite a lot, as you're saying, of, of what comes in is because it's been not necessarily overhandled, but just regularly handled. Mm -hmm. um, and some things, I guess, because of where they've been stored, the problem is yeah. if they've been in damp conditions or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be a big benefit as well. Um, and what what do you do with, with um, documents that come in with mould? I know that's whenever we do tours, that's one of the questions people always like to know. If, you, if something is mouldy, what, what do you do about that? So... Um, when things come in mouldy, we have a room downstairs um, titled the quarantine room. It's very, um, very current. <laughs> Put the staff in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the documents stay in there. And it's not under any special conditions. Um, but we do have a freezer in there. So if anything is um, wet um, and we haven't got enough time to, to dry the document out and it can go in there and remain stable. Um, we recently received quite a big collection from a cemetery up the road in Inverness. Um, they were in pretty poor condition and because there was so much work involved when we brought them in, half the collection went into the freezer and we've just been taking them out gradually. It's been a long process. The collection looks a lot cleaner and brighter now. Um, but we've got a Basser machine, that's a company. Um, but we just call it, it's, it's a downflow workstation. So it's got a vacuum and it's got a HEPA filter. And it's all stainless steel. 
and we can safely work on there, brushing away, wearing a mask, everything's again forced down onto the HEPA filter. And then that gets serviced every three, six months, definitely every six months anyway. Mm. And um, yeah. That's an interesting point though, because you, you both work with a lot of um, kind of acids and glues and fixatives and all sorts of different things. So that's a, a big concern, isn't it? Wearing masks and protecting yourselves. Mm -hmm. You've seen that the unit behind you is your uh, yeah. adhesive mixing yeah. box, isn't it? So that you don't have to, I don't know what the technical term is. But the good news is probably most of the audience also won't know the technical term, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, so just again to protect yourselves because you're dealing with a lot of chemicals. Yeah. 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 Well, the other one is sellotape, isn't it? It's in oh yes, tell us about sellotape. This is something that this is a, this is your moment to get the message about sellotape across to the world. Do you not use sellotape? <laughs> Never use sellotape. It's awful. It's horrible. It, it takes hours to remove, days even. Um, and it doesn't last forever, it falls off. The adhesive dries up, cracks and falls off. So we'll have a document that's maybe 20 or 30 years old and that's how long the um, sellotape lasts for. Okay. Um, sometimes you see the sellotape actually breaking down, we just say to the client, just wait another five, ten years without spending thousands of pounds through conservation, just let nature take its course and the sellotape will just fall off. <laughs> okay. And then all you have to do is slightly go over the, um, the document then, removing the residue rather than dealing with all the sticky... But it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because people often say that they've sellotaped things because they're trying to do the right thing, because they're trying to protect yeah, something so, and keep it so, together. So the other um, option... Um, it's not a great option. I would recommend coming to a conservator firstly and um, asking for advice and we'll advise kind of pastes and tissues and things like that. We can build up um, a picture on the document of different stages of repair that you'd like to carry out. Um, you can encapsulate and do things like this um, in a light polyester pocket rather yeah. than adhesive. Yeah. Um, but there is a teletape out there called Scotch Tape. It's magic Scotch Tape. It's not just Scotch Tape, it's magic. So it's, it's, um, it's, it is still a plastic, but it's a breathable plastic and the adhesive's water reversible. Uh, it doesn't say so on the product, but just through using it, we know. Okay. Yeah. So um, just before everyone goes and throws out their sellotape, because I don't want to be responsible for that, um, sellotape definitely has its places, but just not <laughs> when you're trying to preserve a document for uh, for long term preservation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, use it for your uh, for school projects and things. Yeah. Um, so what sort of uh, what are your favourite things that you've worked on, either of you? Do you have any uh, the oldest thing or your favourite collection you've worked on? Again, I know it's something people always ask when we're on a tour, what's the oldest thing or the most interesting thing? Oh, I personally like working on seals. We, we don't do many. And again, just because when we did a school group once and someone was looking for the seal animal and then was disappointed, yeah. I'll just clarify we're talking about wax seals here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a great disappointment to a small child trying to find a seal. <laughs> and why do you like working on seals? It's just the... It's just, you have to sort of mould the infill. We use, we use beeswax, melted beeswax to form a new infill for a seal. So there was like a, a big chip out of it. You'd have to refill it and it's a really nice relaxing process because you have to melt the wax and smooth the wax and keep applying it. And, and that's, this is so therapeutic. that's yeah. interesting because I, I suppose a lot of the things you do are done in a similar way to how they would have been done originally or yes. for hundreds of years like that exact example I would imagine is how seals have always been made. Mm -hmm. It's like book binding, we follow traditional mm -hmm. techniques in, in book binding. Um, my favourite uh, document book I think I've ever done was obviously I'm Yorkshire but originally I've been here 10, 10 years and I worked on um, a Ripon um, Abbey 
Look, it was from 1300 to 1500, I think. It covered three or four reigns of king. I worked out when I was um, doing the volume. Um, it was bound in three different sheepskins, so just using materials just available. Um, it was obviously written in iron gold, ink, hand, hand written all the way through. And it'd been, it'd been in a, a damp environment, so the edges of the pages had all gone a little bit, I wouldn't say mouldy, but just damp. They just lost all their body, all the cellulose, all the gel that had been used in the match batch had just gone away, and it's just a soft book. So I spent, I think it was 130 hours um, repairing this book over something like six months. It wasn't continuously on this book, but I was working on every page and then I was I bound it, sewed it onto a um, Alan Tord, um goat thread um, cord. I had to throw it, sew it on and then um, and then attached it to the to the um, it's new, such... new uh, I think it's one of the things that's, that's come across in all the interviews that I've done is what a privilege it feels for all of us to, to be able to do those things and, and work with a document of that age and handle it and, and be part of its future as well. And it's interesting when I spoke with Jennifer, one of our archivists, she said her favourite thing about working with archives is getting to know a collection or a person absolutely intimately. And that's the same thing that you're saying there, that that oh, book, really, you yeah. probably know more about that book now than anybody else because you've spent so much intense time with it. Yeah, that's true. It's, um, it's such a privilege, I think. Yeah, so when, we take, um, when we take break a book down, when we break a book down, we, um, we first of all cut away all the sewing. So before we do that, we're counting um, how many folios to a section. Then we can build up a picture of how the section book was put together. So it might be uh, three folios, might be four folios, and sometimes five folios. So that depends on how thick the section is, mm -hmm. how big the book is. Um, and then you, you're finding little scraps of where they've been sharpening one of their feathers up wow. to doing their scribing. Um, and there's, there's all this sharpened off and left in the spine of the book. So you're cleaning it away and forming a little sort of pocket um, envelope of all the different uh, that is amazing. fragments that we've found, all the different sewing cords that we've saved. And then you're numbering through the book. Generally books are quite often, uh, they might be numbered anyway, but we're not sure if there's any missing pages or any added pages because it's a working document. So we will collate all the way through the document mm -hmm. and that period take, can take two hours, it could take half a day, it could take a full day depending on how thick the book is and then you're building a picture of that document and you're working out what treatment is going to be carried out on that book because you're seeing all the writing, the inks and that sort of thing. So you're building up a picture of that half a day to a day is good sort of um, zoning in on the item and just and then the more you know about it and the more kind of intimate your, your knowledge of the object then the best you know how to repair it and how to to stabilize it because you know yeah. all about how it was put together and one of the questions i know you always get asked you never infill any words that are missing if there's any blanks pages sections on a page no we don't add to the history of the book it's a big no-no no. <laughs> it's one of those things people always ask yeah. isn't it when they're in you know do you, would you would you fill that gap and even if it's very clear what the word is you wouldn't do it yeah it's it's, it's we do sometimes book restoration but that's what you're talking about when you want to infill with writing you restore it we don't restore we don't we're not like um, furniture restorers where we can copy a, a pattern of a thread. Yes, you're not trying to make it as it was when it yeah. was first made. You're we just trying to stabilise it. Yeah, we can't yeah. edit it to how we want our boundary to be for us. You know, so, yeah. Imagine if yeah. Carrie and Richard were changing history in this room yes. by adding words into documents. <laughs>
but it is it is something people always ask. Uh, certainly, me when I'm giving a tour, they'll always ask that question. Um, so the final thing I want to ask you, unless there's anything key that you want to shout about about conservation before we go, um, is why is your job important? Um, you know, we're, we're living through a kind of crazy time in the world just now, which is just witnessed by us all standing so far apart to do this interview. But um, why is it still important for us to look after these old documents and, and make sure they survive? It's a big question. It's a big question. <laughs> Um, well, it's always important to look after your local history and your national history and, and the documents help preserve all this history. Um, we have proper environmentally controlled um, repositories where every document is looked after at 16 degrees and 50-55 relative humidity, 55% relative humidity. Um, and all we do when the document comes in is help um, preserve or stabilise. Stabilise is a good word for a document because um, it can come in acidic, it can come in um, with spines breaking off the document, and we come along and um, We'll clean the documents, removing any acidic residues. We'll add um, buffers into maps and documents to stabilise um, the paper. So um, some of these sky um, plans that I've been working on, they've been coming in at four and a half pH. Uh, seven is neutral. Um, so I've been adding a calcium carbonate buffer which brings them up to six, which isn't perfect seven, but um, they are stabilised and they've got that buffer in there, then they'll keep them at six, they won't drop below mm -hmm. that again. Um, and then a lot of papers will lose their gelatin size over a period of time, the paper will start feeling soft, so we'll add a um, size into the paper that adds body to the paper. So there's a lot of um, stabilising going on and then we're preparing the tears, we're doing the infills with blank bits of paper. <laughs> <laughs> Not practical. <laughs> but without, without conservators doing uh, their job, then researchers wouldn't be able to use or handle the documents maybe. And, and I suppose what you're doing essentially is preventing them just disappearing for good. Um, in the long term. So, you know, researchers wouldn't be able to, in my job, I wouldn't be able to use the documents without the work of you guys stabilising and protecting them. Um, so, we're agreed it's super important. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about conservation. If you want to know anything more about uh, the services that we offer, we, we do work for exter external clients as well as on our own collection. So if you want to find any more about that, then please just uh, drop us an email or comment on this video and we'll uh, let you know some more information. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.